with Herman and Sharon. Thank you, Brooke. We appreciate it. We are Hello, going everybody. to have an unbelievable. Yes, I understand that. Testimony today. It, it, it impacted me that when mm -hmm. I finally finished the book, I was sitting in my van, hadn't started it yet, and I just sat there and go, whoa. <laughs> And, and yeah. it is a, an amazing story, but watch this, and I will introduce you to the person, persons mm -hmm. that we're going to be talking to. Yes. Watch this. And she said these words that would just forever change my life. She said, you will live and not die. As the band began to start the worship music, I stood and I raised my hand in, in worship. And a woman that I didn't know, I had never seen her before, she walked past me, turned around, and came back and stood nose to nose with me. She said, fear not, for the Lord your God says you will surely live and not die. There she is. There's that tight on Dell that I was after. <laughs> All right. That's the one that you just watched on that's that right. clip by CBN. That, that, they do a great job, don't they? Mm -hmm. They did. They, they, they've they got the bucks. Yeah. You understand what that means? Yeah, sure I do. You can do production that you just sit there with your mouth open. I know. Uh, but this is Dell Anderson and her husband, Carrie. That's right. He graciously decided to come on with her, and, and it's so yeah. neat. Yes. Thank yeah. you for doing that. I always like couples. Yes. It kind of balances it everything. It does. It's a, we're, yeah. we're couples, so. We like it. Too. Uh, she's had a life that went from atrocious abuse to mind-boggling miracles. She is a well-recognized businesswoman. Doesn't she look like that? Yeah. I mean, she looks like I could a tell she was. Fortune 500. <laughs> uh, <laughs> having achieved success in the home building. <laughs> can, you, can you believe it? I watched that one, I don't know if you've ever seen that one uh, younger lady uh, that, that she's always taking old homes oh, yeah. and redoing them. Yeah. And yes. she wants to keep the tubs and yeah. the light fixtures. You ever seen that one? Yes, I have. And I, I mean, she, she would be like you, probably can do that very same thing. You should have your own show. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, she has been, uh, magazine publishing, uh, sales and marketing arena, and she has a heart to see the emotionally wounded set free from painful memories of the past. That's right. She is a wife, mother of four. Wow. I know. What ages? Oh, mercy. <laughs> When were, you, when were you married? I'm just kidding. Let's <laughs> bring all this out. Yeah, yeah I, I hate dates, but anyway. Yeah. Just the names. Um, Cliff. Yeah. He's 48. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Courtney is 40. Whoa. Ashley is 35. Yeah. And then we adopted uh, our grandson, yep. and he's 20. Oh. So uh, <laughs> we have four. Let's get into this yes. unbelievable story. Yes, it is. That will eventually, this is a prediction, be in your local theaters. Yes, <laughs> I receive it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally, I, I've seen stories that are not as good as this one. Uh -huh. That I agree. somebody came up yeah. with a, you know, because yeah. they got the backing and they were able yeah. to do the movie. That's yeah. the big deal. You got to get the money. Yep. You can't do it. That's the problem. Uh, but I'm, you said, I tried to write this book over 30 years ago, but I had to put it down. Yeah. Can we start there? Sure. Walk us through that. Well, 30, over 30 years ago, a friend of mine had said, you really got to put this down in book form, because I was speaking at a lot of different churches throughout the Southeast. And I, I really felt that gentle nudge from the Lord to s begin to write my book. But every single time I would begin to write it or I'd start to write it, I would just go into a deep depression. 
and I would have to put it down, deal with that specific issue. And sometimes that would take weeks, sometimes it would take months, sometimes it would take years. So um, Now the clip begins because it says, it starts at chapter one, mm -hmm. you will live and not die. What impacted that individual to say those words? Well, th I'd never met this woman before in my life. I was just standing there worshiping. She walked by and looked me right in the face and said, she just, she just said, you will live and not die. Now, why was that meaningful to you? It wasn't. It wasn't meaningful to me at all because I, I mean, I wasn't sick. I had a little pain in my shoulder, but I certainly didn't feel any impending doom, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So I stood there kind of dumbfounded. So your life was going okay at that point. R right. Yeah. And then a second time she said, she could tell that I was, you know, puzzled by what she was saying. And she said, hear me. For the Lord your God says you will truly live and not die. And then a third time she said it. She said, fear not. So you're in a church. I'm in a church on the front row uh, listening to Bethel music out of Redding, California. They had just started their worship. So she, you were seated? I, at this point I was standing okay. and I had my arm raised. So you she know, comes crazy. up to you. She walks up to me. And then the third thing she said was, and the Lord says it is time. And I thought, time for what? And she said, the book you started writing so many years ago and couldn't finish because of your pain. The Lord is healing you of that pain right now. So many will hear your story and be healed for the glory of God. At that point, I'm thinking, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah. This is surely a message you from God. You never met her. No, I didn't know her. Wow. In fact, she was there from another church and she was helping to orchestrate uh, the conference that we were at. Now so. let me walk to this. Okay. The first seven years of your life in Tennessee. Right. Wonderful, right? Great it's parents. Great, yeah. Great parents. Godly parents, yes. Share that with us, how, how your life began, mm -hmm. and then we want to walk into <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable is right. Okay, let's, let's, in our mind now, we want to see this happy house. Yes. And dad's doing good. Yes, dad, my dad um, was a UDT man in the Navy, and I believe. Which is a SEAL, right? It is yeah. a Navy SEAL yeah. team today. Yeah. So he was a very high achiever and expected a lot. That means he's smart as a whip. He was very, very intelligent yeah. and a go-getter, and everybody loved him. It's just who my dad was, wow. very gregarious and everything. He taught me how to swim by throwing me off a pier in Savannah Beach. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And I was about a year old. Yeah. So that kind of tells yeah. oh, you yeah. his oh, mindset. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, but we had, you know, uh, we went to church on Sunday and we'd go to my grandparents after church and have dinner and with the family and we just had a normal life. Then what happened? My father was working for a bank and he, one of his responsibilities was to repossess automobiles that, had, that were needed to be collected. And he was coming home late one night and he fell asleep and ran into a rock bluff. And when he did it, threw him from the car and all the nerves from his spinal column uh, going down the left side of his body and his arm were pulled away from the spinal cord. Now this was a handsome, yes. active, Very energetic, yes. strong. Yes. And now, and, and the next time you see him, he's well, in a puddle of blood yes. in the hospital. Yes. Uh, he had 180 stitches in his head and I, I ran loose from my mom and went over to him because my dad was my life. And uh, he was like, where is my arm? Where is my arm? Because he was paralyzed yeah. from the nerves being severed from his spinal column. Um, he survived that, but it left him an invalid. 
my dad had uh, they had to amputate his left arm. He was in excruciating pain from morning to night. It was it was unquenchable, just would not stop. And as a result, he became addicted to drugs. And, and his whole personality changed. His whole personality changed. Sure. But now, see, he was unable to, um, you know, succeed and to do the things that he used to do. So he lived his life vicariously through me, and he expected me to be the best at everything. And your mom then, who was taken care of because he was successful in business and so forth, she had to work. She did. She and that was a new experience. Sure was. And, and, and now he became jealous and he, was, he couldn't he couldn't perform like a man no so now not he's, in any way yeah so he's taking this out on the way she now looks when she's leaving for work or whatever so yeah. that so the happy home well it was gone it was um, and when I said I had to be the best at everything I wasn't yeah. and I wanted to be I tried to be but if I wasn't he could be quite cruel. Because he know. was leave it, living himself through you. Exactly. Like when he put you on the diver and he made you dive. <laughs> well, I, you, I was only, oh yes, that, you're that, talking about another yes, incident. Yes. yes, He made you dive. Yes, and I was And you terrified. did a belly flop. I did. <laughs> which could have killed you. It, it, it knocked me out. And he did it in front of all my friends. So uh, I was humiliated and embarrassed and when I, kind of snapped out of it. He was he was there in the water and I said, I hate you. Yeah. I really didn't, but I was mm -hmm. just so tired. You felt humiliated. I was yeah. so humiliated. Yeah. And that went on and on in he, he, every and aspect he, he of my life. He did the life. same thing with horses, right? Yes. Because you loved horses. Yes. Got you a horse. Yeah. And, and you f fell off. Yes. And he put you right back on that he baby said, and said, this is the way you live. Yeah, if you, you fall, get back you, up there. You get yeah, did back up. Did you have up. sisters or brothers or anything? I did not. I was you an only, only child. child. So yes. everything was focused on you. Everything. Everything. Let's let's move to your marriages. Oh yeah. Okay. Because this is this is amazing. It's it's almost like troubles back here, mm -hmm. or it's sitting on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have no discernment of the guy that's in front of you. Right. No, I was. I was completely ignorant, and I was not a Christian, uh, so God certainly was not my partner. I did everything kind of on a knee-jerk reaction. Uh, my home life was terrible. Yeah. It was terrible. It went from great to terrible. Terrible. A lot of kids get married or girls get married because just to get away from the home. Exactly. That's, right. yeah. That's exactly what happened. I wanted a happy home. I wanted a, a, a family unit. I just wanted that more than anything in the world. Yeah. And my mother had kind of, well, she changed a whole lot when my dad was ill and she had all this responsibility and he was constantly on us. Yeah. So um, she was not a happy camper either. She was not a happy person yeah, sure. to be around. Yeah. And I, I just wanted out. And the Vietnam War was in full swing, and all the young men in my high school and everything were terrified about being drafted. And my boyfriend, who I called the cowboy uh, in the book, uh, he and I were involved in rodeos and horror shows and that kind of thing. And he came to me and he said, I'm going to uh, enlist because they tell me, he said, I saw a recruiter and he said, if I enlisted, the chances of me going to Nam were, were a lot less. So um, he enlisted, and he right as he as soon as he got out of uh, advanced infantry training, he got his marching orders for Nam. And it is interesting too. Your dad, which was a great guy, yes, he he said, "Keep yourself until yes. you're married." He certainly did. He told did. you that, didn't he? The so. night he died, he brought me in a big snow on the ground in Tennessee. He was in the hospital. You know what is amazing? I don't want to interrupt you, but, but he even told you, and you kind of wondered, you know that new suit? Yeah. That your mother yes. has? Yes. 
Yeah. Make sure that you know where that is. Yeah, and he said, <laughs> get it dry clean. Because he knew. Because I'm going to be needing it. And I said, why, Daddy? And he said, I'm just going to be needing yeah. it. And I said, okay, fine. So that's where he told you, keep yourself. He told me, he said, I want you to make Daddy a promise. I said, sure. And he said, I want you to save yourself for marriage. He said, you know, I want you to be pure when you get married. And I said, I will, Daddy, I promise, I promise. And that promise also impacted some of the decisions I made. Yeah. But um, my husband was getting ready to go to Vietnam, I, or my you, boyfriend. You, yeah, your boyfriend, okay. My boyfriend yeah. was getting ready to go to Vietnam. And so, like many young men, it happened a lot, they wanted to get married before they left so they'd have somebody waiting on them. Yeah. When they got Plus, back. you weren't going to give yourself no. unless you were married. Yeah. Exactly. And he figured that one out. That was exactly <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. By the way, you I read where you were an excellent student. So yes. you you got the DNA of your dad yes. because you were very smart. So so he's, he's now wanting to marry. Yes. And um, so I thought, well, I'm not going to tell you exactly what I thought because it's so completely stupid. Now go ahead. No. This is this is a stupid show. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, if he goes to and this is embarrassing, no, but I thought I thought if he goes to Vietnam and gets killed, I may be a virgin my whole entire life. <laughs> <laughs> See that? I think that's for me. I told you. I told you. Because I promised my dad. That's right. Uh, that's a well, true we're young, story. We, we yeah. make the stupidest mistakes. Yeah, you know, when you're oh. young and you're dating somebody, you say, please, God, don't come back. I know yeah. they're all talking about you're coming right. back soon. But boy, I got a lot of things I want right. to do. So it's like, okay, so you got married? We got married on horseback. <laughs> and uh, we had a rodeo wedding. It was yeah. quite something. And. And um, we spent the night in a hotel, and the next day he shipped out. And when he came back, he was a different person. Oh, yeah. yeah. He had seen so much in Vietnam that he had severe PTSD. Oh, my goodness. And, was uh, he abusive? Well, he never hit me, but he would do things like... Um, I served a bowl of rice one night, and he he dumped it on my head and said, "Don't ever serve me rice again." He would hear we were burning trash one night um, outside. We lived in a mobile home on his dad's property, and uh, he had brought a gun home from with him from Vietnam, and we were burning some trash, and a bottle exploded. He grabbed the gun and leaped out into the yard and was low crawling. I mean, he was really messed up. See, people don't realize what these they guys just go through. They yeah. don't. Same thing they with don't. Iraq and all of that. Right. Yeah. We got 10 minutes left. Oh, my so let's, goodness. Yeah. So let's move that along. This is not okay. a 700 Club where the guy right. owns the whole thing. <laughs> uh, okay. So walk us through this and your other marriages and how you were okay. led by God to, to something miraculous happens. Okay. Well, um, that marriage did not last, yeah, obviously. obviously. Yeah. And I, we lived in a small town, and I knew I had to. I got pregnant right away, and when he got back from Vietnam, and so I had a premature baby, and I knew I wanted to get out of the small town and go to the city. I go to the city. I what, what is the city? In Nashville. Right. And uh, I met a, a young man there that I thought was my knight in shining armor. Wasn't he? A, was, wasn't he a seal or? or? Well, no, no, no. Okay, okay, no, right. No, um, but anyway, he um, after about a year, and he treated me like gold. He asked me to marry him, and I thought my ship had come in. He good said, looking. Good looking, yeah. good looking, always. Well, you, you always choose good looking. I, of course I do. <laughs> yeah. I've only got 10 minutes to yeah, talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And so anyway, um, we got married, and he said, where do you want to go on your honeymoon? And I, I said, I want to go to Miami Beach. So we take off to Miami, and the night we married, the night of our honeymoon, rather, um, we go to the hotel, and... We crawl into bed, and he starts asking me questions about my past. Well, I didn't have a past, 
you know, I'd been married, but that was it. And I said, well, you know, I've been married, but that's it. And he said, well, I have something to tell you. And he said, where do you hear this? He said, you're not my second wife. You know, I was married before also. You're my fourth. And as he told me that, I began to cry. And I said, well, don't you think you should have told me that before now? And, and, uh, and when I said that and I was crying, he said, you don't love me. You never loved me. He said, uh, um, if you did, you wouldn't, it wouldn't matter how many times I've been married. So with that, he jumped up over the top of me and began to beat me senseless. He punched and punched and punched. And now we know why he was married four times. Well, yeah. right. Yeah. So, um, wow. anyway, he went, he fell asleep and I got up and I thought, I got to get out of here. And I took off out the door of the hotel down the street. He found me, beat me again, threw me in a ditch in Miami Beach. And that went on for three years, locking me in closet for days at a time. And you always thought it was going to get better, right? Well, it would get better after he would abuse me. That's, that's an abuser's yeah, MO. That, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. he, would, he would nurse me back to health, and he would be so charming and kind and the person that I thought I was going to be married to for the rest of my life. And I didn't want to go back home to my mom, and I stayed for three years. So how did you get away from it? Well, finally, uh, one particular night, it was our anniversary, in fact, um, he, uh, he came home, he was going to take me out to dinner, and so I was all dressed and ready to go, and uh, he didn't like what I had on. It was just a simple little navy blue dress, and he beat me up again. And that night, I said, one of us is going to die if I stay here. I even picked up a big jagged rock while he was asleep and went, held it up over my head while he was sleeping and I was going to smash him in the face and my little son started crying. Wow. It kind of snapped me back into reality. Wow. And I moved to Atlanta. My girlfriend came in the midnight hour and and uh, helped me load up my stuff and we moved to Atlanta. I got a good job there and within about six months, I thought there's no way he's ever gonna find me. I left no forwarding address. I went out to my car one morning to go to work and there was a dead dog in, the, in my front seat with a note that said, you're next baby. And I knew he'd found me. A few nights later, my son was with my mother few nights later, I come in from work and he's behind the door and when I walked in, he put a knife to my throat and said, tonight you're mine and you're gonna die. I maneuvered the situation uh, by uh, using my female walls and said, "You, I'm so sorry, I should have never left you, I love mm -hmm. you, and he goes to the bedroom and I'm stark naked, and when he goes to the bedroom, I pulled an afghan off the back of my sofa, lifted the chain off the back door, and ran down the street as hard as I could run. And you found somebody that had let you in, right? It was an elderly lady. Uh, I saw a light on. She invited me in, clothed me, told me about Jesus, and my reaction was, if Jesus loves me, he'll go over and take this man out. I didn't want any part of it. What happened after that? We have four minutes. Well, uh, I remarried again yeah. to a man that I hired. I got pregnant. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to expand our family. And he was good looking, right? Very good looking. <laughs> that. Very yeah. handsome. Yeah. And uh, anyway, um, you, you were in business together. Right? We were in business to get together, and we got saved. Yeah. And we were happy, and, and everything you, was going right. And you took him his dinner took one him evening, his, and you find him in the hot tub with another woman. And I mean, they weren't enjoying the water as much <laughs> as they were. Yeah. And so he turns around and sees you. 
He did. And he said, what are you doing here? And I said, I brought you your dinner, and I threw it in the, in the jacuzzi with him. I was in my second trimester of pregnancy. I went to my pastor, and I said, you're a liar. There is no such thing as God. You preach about a God of love. And I said, he doesn't love me. He may love everybody else, but he certainly doesn't love me. And I went and had an abortion. Yeah. Mm. Take us past that. Well, uh, I at that point, I just, I was suicidal. Yeah. I didn't want to live. Uh, I, I just wanted to forget everything, and it, it just wasn't possible. Down the road, years down the road, I met Carrie. Here's another good-looking guy. Another good-looking guy. <laughs> the last one. <laughs> oh. 42, 42 years later? 42 years that we've been married, and when I fell in love with him, I thought, well, he's going to leave now, or yeah. something bad's yeah. going to happen. I tried to sabotage my own marriage, and, and but when I, I told him all the things that had happened to me, and I thought that would be his chance to escape, and he said, it's too late, I love you, wow. and God sent me into your life wow. to undo all those ugly things, wow. and if it takes the rest of my life, wow. I'll prove it to you. What was the and miracle, has, physical miracle you had? The physical miracle was that I, three days after the woman said, you will live and not die, I had a massive heart attack, and the, the um, Widowmaker artery was 95% closed, and I had several others that were 30% closed. Wow. So you were a dead woman walking. I, my heart was only at 20%. I was, I had a defibrillator fitted because I was in cardiac arrest, and I went to a Rodney Howard Brown uh, uh, service one morning. He had heard about it because he knew me and told me to come. He prayed for me, and when he put his head on my forehead, it, the power of God was so strong that it surged, and my defibrillator went off in front of hundreds and hundreds of people. Long story short, you were healed. The next day, I went back to my cardiologist, and my heart was back to normal. Said you didn't even need it, right? Didn't need it. He said, take it off. We got 30 seconds, right? Pray for somebody out there, just 30 seconds. 30 I know it's hard for a charismatic yeah, to say. pray a 30-second prayer. <laughs> it well, is. Let's give it a shot. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, for anybody who is in the sound of my voice that has suffered trauma from the past, I pray, Father God, that you would open their hearts and that you would extract that pain, Lord and you would give them a new life, yes. that you would unchain them yes. from the memories of their past. Yes, In Jesus' name we ask this, amen. 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 God bless you. Bye -bye.